We're going to be starting on this engine build real quick here. Uh, before you ever start one of these, you definitely need to take everything apart and blow out every hole. Uh, take carburetor cleaner, spray it in all the holes or, or brake cleaner, spray it in all the holes, all the oil galleys, every hole like here, here, I mean everywhere. And make sure you blow everything out really clean. Make sure there's no debris, no extra little machining pieces or anything. Uh, but uh, we've got everything all laid out. You, you know, you get everything all set up and laid out before you start. It makes helps a lot. Or organize organize is good. And on a couple of things we need to do before we get going is see how these. If you notice uh, these bearings, we've already done this one. But um, the bearings don't line up quite perfect with the oil holes um, so you'll find that the oil holes are supposed to line up with this groove and you know they don't they don't line up so what we do is we see so you have that subtle grinding spot there you can see we grind a little spot in there to help the oil find this groove so it lines up better with that so that gives you a lot more oil pressure um, that's match porting your oil um, stuff. The other thing we did is we match ported the ports on this on the oil pump with the case you see here and not on this end on the other half. This one here we've already um, we, we tapped this out we're gonna put a plug in there because we're using a uh, full flow system you watch my oil pump video for that um, but this one here we match ported this if you see god damn I don't know why that thing's not focusing here we go. You see how that's ported? That actually matches up with the oil pump. So we made it everything together. This case here has, uh, what are these called? Shuffle pins. Shuffle pins in it. So it doesn't, you don't have to, uh, it doesn't have O-rings that goes on these. So unlike your other cases, um, if you have these with the shuffle pins in them, they're really long, different than the other ones that come on them. The other ones are really, really thin. It comes in the regular case and they don't look quite as long as this and then you you would have to put your o-rings here this this case does not require that and what that does is that helps the case from vibrating and your line bore could last a lot longer by doing that that's why these aluminum cases are far superior to the others so so we'll show you real quick how to do the bearing here we're going to use paint we usually use it to paint marker but we can't find it right now just put a little bit of paint around the, that's the oil galley hole. Mm -hmm. And then you set the bearing in place. Match them in there, and then you kind of push on it a bit. Use the mallet maybe. Just get it in place. And pick the bearing back out. You paint it here. Set your bearing in place. Last one, we did another little cut on this and didn't come out that great. Let's hope it comes out good this time. But uh, usually we use the yellow paint marker, so this is a little different way to do it. But it tells you where the hole lines up. Mm, didn't give us a really right good there. reading, but yeah, you can see right there. that it's only half of the hole is touching the bearing. And look right here, this is the oil groover right here. See how much it actually overlaps? Yeah, it doesn't doesn't mate up with those holes because of these dowel pins here so you got to make sure that those are in your case as well so that's going to correct a little so just by just machining this little area right here like the one bearing that i showed you let's look at that one again like this one where is that actually this isn't it that's the other one this one like we did with this bearing you see how we just took the and just kind of helped it find so the oil will uh, help it find to that center piece that'll give you a lot more oil pressure we do this on the new motor every new motor so just use this little uh, dremel tool be very careful doing this That's all it needs. Just a little bit just to kind of help the oil find the groove. 
So in these stroker cranks, they have all of the, they have little plugs in them like this. And you need to take out all these plugs. Okay. And then you need to clean everything out. Out of sight, you know, blow it all out with the same way. Make sure you use brake spray and a lot of air. Make sure that the, there's no machining stuff still in there. And then when you put these back in, you need to use some red Loctite. Put it on the threads and then put them in place. Yeah, red Loctite. Put them back in. Make them tight. Make sure you do that. If you don't do that, we've seen them come apart just from that. in place so with the woodruff key in place we use a hot plate some guys use a torch you can do whatever you whichever way you want uh, we just use a hot plate because then it makes a nice consistent heat and then they're both sitting there hot and you can just slam them both on and we use pliers to put them on some guys use a glove um, those mm -hmm. things get pretty freaking hot um, pliers is a good way to grab them so you don't have to worry about the gloves Okay, this end here goes down, like that. and you fall it on the ground. Right after you just cook it. Oh, we should do that in slow motion. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so go ahead. The notches go down, and we mark. We've got our bearings marked. If you can see the little marks there, we didn't have our paint markers, so usually we'll use it for that too. But you can just scribe it in there real carefully. So it goes down. Make sure it's the right direction. If you get that upside down, it's a pain. You gotta pull your gears back off. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and set the gears on one at a time. The dots are facing up. The dots are facing up. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get out of his way a little bit. Sometimes that happens. It's tight. A little oil on there helps. Spacer. Spacer next. Nice and tight on these uh, stroker cranks. They're really tight tolerance. Okay, now the brass gear. Is there a direction for that one? No. no. Doesn't matter. Can't remember. Been a while since I've done one by myself. I usually had, um, yeah, and then turn your hot plate off, right? So you yeah. don't burn yourself. The good old snap ring, especially while the gears are hot. Put the snap ring on, we'll spare you guys the details of that. You scratch the living crap out of your crank trying to do it sometimes. Back in the old days, I remember doing that. All right, we'll bring you back into the video in a second here. You want to kind of do this all while it's hot, so then the cool the crankshaft out with the air. Clean the rods off with the brake spray and wipe them down really good, especially on the new rods because they have that cosmoline or oil on them or something. All right, so you guys who think you can just, uh, you know, bolt your stuff back on, yeah, it's not always that way. We put these rods on and they feel tight. So right here you can see this is kind of rubbing where this tang is and sometimes the machining is just a hair off and so what you got what we do is we just kind of lightly kind of sand that area down and very carefully fit these to the journal so um just so you know i mean this is kind of more of an expert type of a thing i mean if you're not up for the game listen you know, CB Performance builds these things really good, and so does, there's another place that's local to us called uh, Brothers. Brothers Machine Shop. They build a really nice motor, um, and they, they really put a lot of care into putting it together. You're going to pay a lot of money for it, but you do have to fit some of the stuff. Um, so those had to be just lightly sanded, and we put them on, tighten them up, tap, them, tap the sides of them with a hammer lightly, and kind of make sure that they seat properly. And then tighten them up a little bit tighter, then tap them on the sides, and then tighten them up to the torque spec, which we're not going to give you. We're going to let you guys look that up for the rods you got, because, you know, we may or may not be right. So um, I'd rather somebody else tell you something that's not correct. But um, but we, we believe we have the correct specification for it. 
but I'm just telling you, um, how about this? It's, it's a little bit of fun. Once we get past this point, usually it's pretty easy, but um, you really want the bottom end to just move freely. If it doesn't, if you tighten up, you put tighten up the rods and they don't move, you got to take them apart, start looking at them and look for stuff like that. If you can see that little spot where it's kind of crushed looking, that's what you need to work on. All right. All right, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you guys here um, this the stock rod so you can get this. It has, you know, if you look at the books and stuff, they have, they show you to put this part up on your rod. And these new rods, and you can see these little tangs here, they go down. So the new ones, the Kermali rods, one of the reasons you need these rods is because they're clearance in the back here. And uh, and they, they also have stronger bolts in them and stuff, and they're stronger rods. But what you want to do is you want to put them on so that the tangs are down. So that's your mimicking the original, but you don't have that mark that they show in the books. If you ever have an old Volkswagen book, it'll show you this little this little thing here. These don't have it. So we're going to go ahead and assemble it up. Now we've already put this all together and we've already put them together one at a time and carefully went through and uh, looked for tighten them up you know and then made sure that the, we noticed that the bearings were where those little tangs are maybe their machine work was slightly off we went ahead and adjusted that by just sanding the bearing a little bit perfectly okay it's nice and tight now that we tighten them up you'll see um, you put all the rods back on Make sure you have the things in the correct position here. These little things in the right position. Yeah, on this side, right there. And um, you know, so those should be facing the camshaft. And then you go ahead and, and put. We're just using motor oil, right? Motor oil. Well, it's a little bit of a couple different things. It's uh, 2050 Marble Mister Oil and assembly lube. Assembly loop and Marvel Mystery Oil. That's what he uses. Everybody has a different formula. Some guys just use motor oil. That's fine. Um, I'm the old school guy who uses uh, uh, oil and STP together, mixed. You know, but it's, sometimes that can be a little bit too thick, especially for this kind of a motor. So um, these are very tight tolerances, and you know, that's why that that motor goes together. So. But what you want to do is you want to run your rods around and make sure there's no tight spots in them. That's the main thing. So, and if there is, you'll take it apart and look at the rod and find those shiny spots in the bearing. And then figure out what to do. Why, why is it doing that? See how we tap each rod and then retighten them? Um, that's the way you're supposed to do it. You check them once, tap them, and do them twice because they have to seat into the, uh, into the, just a little light love tap there. So we'll go through and we'll do all these and I'll bring you guys back into the video. They're all gonna be the same, it's kind of repetitive. And we'll bring you guys back in the video and we're putting the crank into the motor, I think is that's the next step after this. Yeah, next step. Oh, something we don't usually do is some guys put Loctite on the rod bolts. Um, we found that that's not a good idea. We'll yeah, pull usually the out. end up pulling the threads out, trying to take it back apart someday when you go to work on it. So, um, you know, there, there's guys that will still will do that, but you know, that's not something we do. We usually just, we'll use a little oil and to make sure it lubricates the threads and then torque it to the proper specification. And usually that does it. I mean, some of your H beam rods and stuff like that, um, they they have stretch issues and stuff like that. that you know, those are those are things you know it's better if you just don't even get into that and wait till you know it's something you have to graduate into you know going from a stroker to, from regular block to a stroker is a little bit more work and then uh, even with the aluminum case you know the cool thing about the aluminum case is you, it's a bolt-in type of thing versus uh, you know if you have the regular other one you have to have it machined and uh, so anyway all right, so one of the things you always do when you're putting it together is you take and drop your lifters in and you just kind of check the bores. You just make sure they're right. You know, even though it's a new case, you just make sure they're, they feel right. And then uh, you got the cam bearings in place. We just, you just push them in. 
and then uh, you put that this is assembly loop we're using this stuff right here CRC on stay loop and hit assembly loop so we're gonna go ahead and drop the crank in now we get all the bearings in place um, these are marked again so that we can find the hole the holes there's little set pins so you drop turn it around like that find the hole same thing up here turn around a little bit so that you know you're in the dowel pin and then it'll seat itself you do it by feel but the best way is to kind of mark those and just check it make sure there's good rotation and then we'll um, tap it. Now yeah, always tap it to make sure, just to make sure it, it seats. The dowel pins are so tight sometimes that they seat themselves in. You can check to see surface. if the bearings uh, seated all the way by putting this cap on, and if you can wiggle the cap back and forth. Yeah, yeah, that's. And it's not seated, but this one's tight. Right, so you check it with that, with the bearing, like that, by just wiggling it. If it's if it's wiggling back and forth, you'll notice it. It'll be you know there's you probably need to pull it back out and then you'll see a dent in one of the bearings. Sometimes I've done it before years ago and actually had to buy an extra buy another set of bearings because oh, I happens. ruined one. Everybody. Yeah, I mean everybody learns. <laughs> there's always a mistake. It's a sixty-five dollar I mean, mistake right there. You learn that on your sixteen hundred. You know when you just do the you know the used parts rebuild. But we're going to drop in the lifters now. You know, it, they need to fit just right. If they're too loose. Then you need to have your lifter bores done. If you if you have a this is if you have another case. It's nice when you have these brand new cases because usually none of that stuff's an issue. But you always double check their machine work. So because you just don't know. I mean, hey, it's not because the guy could have went to lunch right when that was going on or something. That actually happens a lot. Yep. I mean, it's not just because they're terrible machinists. I mean, everybody does makes mistakes. Every, everywhere in the world, people make mistakes. Okay, we're going to put the other cast, uh, have the case on a little bit once we get the cam set. We got to do some work to that. Um, we're going to actually, on the lifters, some guys you will use oil, some guys use a special cam lube. Um, sometimes we use uh, SDP and oil mixed. If you don't want 100% SDP, because SDP is so slippery, your cam may never break in. So um, we use a little bit of oil and some SDP together. Because that has ZDDP in it, and that helps to make sure the cams lube properly during the break-in process. And there's going to be so much oil on there, pretty much it's going to wash some of that off and put it into the oil. But it gives it that first few minutes of protection, you know, slide. You know, you always wipe the STP is a great stuff for for assembly lube. I, I, used, I used to do all my engines by just using STP and oil mix. I learned that. That's what I learned doing V8s, everything. Cam plug. Drop that in. Here's your cam plug here. We always use silicone. I like this brand right here, VersaCam Mega Black. Uh, we use that one and everything. Is that one open yet? Yeah. And that stuff is like super strong. You put that on there, man. That's just, it's like a permanent gasket. You can put it in either way, but we use, I usually put the flat side to the inside uh, because if you have an auto stick or something, then you'll have an issue because uh, it'll the flux plate will hit against that and just wear a hole through it. But I always run them this direction right here. That way you're covered either way. Does it even fit? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of a tight one. It'll fit. There yeah, it's a really tight fit. That new case is just... It's weird, man. This aluminum is different. You know, one thing that's nice about the aluminum, I mean, everything's really tight fitting. When you go to pull the case halves apart, it's really tight, even more tight than a than a mag. It doesn't flex, you know. It's just a really strong way to do it. Now, what are you going to use around to to seal the case, Chris? Are you going to hope some dreams? You know, it's a Volkswagen, man. Anything everybody so. uses different <laughs> stuff. I mean, listen, there's a there's a million different ways to do it. I mean, I've heard of guys using silicone stuff. even, and you know, their motors don't blow up. You know, I think. Uh, I was watching VW Darren, and I was pretty shocked because a lot of us don't use that. Um, the guys out here use Yama Bond. I mean, that's Yama one thing. Bond, there's um, Honda Bond. There's we did Yama Bond. We've done this stuff, the Permatex number two for the case halves. Yeah, that's um, I've seen guys use the 
the just silicone. I mean, they say that silicone has a film, and I don't know. You know, I think they all work. I mean, I, it just depends on what you feel comfortable with. We like to use, I like to use Yama Bond. We don't have any, so we're going to use that stuff right here. Permatex. Permatex is number two, I think. Yeah, not the one, not the one that gets hard. It's number two. So we'll go ahead and spread that on there. It takes a little bit to do. We'll bring you guys back in the video in a minute. We'll get a stop and clean the cam here. That standby are all fixed. It works pretty good. Oh, we don't have the vacuum on. That's why you can hear it right now. Otherwise, you could, you would, you'd, you'd be able to see a lot better. It'd be perfectly clear. Well, in here, yeah. <laughs> Look at that thing, man. It works good. It's too lazy to get the vacuum out. All right, so this thing here, when you put your cam gear on, you, you you see how this is a straight line here, okay? And it lines up with the one hole, and there's no hole on this side. So if that's facing you when you're holding it, that's the one where your 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 dot is supposed to be. So um, you can see the little, the, the little, there's a little dot on the cam right there. It's hard to see because it's so clean. Um, that lines up with the dot, there we go. and it, that'll be the correct way to put it on. So if you try to put it on the opposite of that, there's no hole there. You see what I'm saying? And then that's wrong, and that's wrong. Turn around where it's right. That's right. Okay? So your dot faces the hole there. All right? So that's fortune. All right, so we're going to line up the marks. you got, what, two on here, right? Mm -hmm. And you put the one that's on there between them. Okay, so that they're lined up, and then make sure it's turning correctly and not popping out. Sometimes you'll have one that's too tight, and that way it'll tell you that the gear doesn't have any burrs in it too. So you always rotate it a couple times, um, and then uh, we gotta put the cam plug back in. We took it out. Um, one of the other things you need to do too is you need to take your oil pump, okay, and and test fit it at this point goes in here this way because you know this part lines up with the this part lines up with the center of the cam that's what drives the pump so you put this in this way and then some of them every once in a while you have one where this thing here right here will rub against the bolts on the pump, so you need to make sure you need don't need to clearance that. See so you know, the aftermarket in and out pumps, the, some 30 millimeter pumps, the melling pumps also. Mm -hmm. That's a problem because they're really chunky. Yeah, some of the it just depends on the pump. It depends on which one you got. These ones are these are like cheaper brand, and then not like the melling or a little more expensive. Mm -hmm. But um, the cheaper ones usually, yeah, it's just it's a hit and miss. You don't know. Just check it and make sure it doesn't hit. We're gonna put this plug in here later. Um, but this is also remember getting a plug put in there for the uh, what's it called uh, full flow system. All right, so we're ready to drop the case on. We put went uh, put these on both ends uh, the brown stuff just to make sure that it's you know got enough on there. Yeah. Then we're just going to set the rod straight up. Now we we don't have we can't find the uh, the clips for the. For the the lifters so hopefully we'll be lucky enough to get it together without them usually you have a clip that holds um, the lifters in place and we can't find them right now from when he moved his shop so we'll just uh, do it without it Let's see if it goes down oh got it. how did that go together like that it's pretty good because those aluminum cases are a little trickier than you know, they're, they're very stiff. The stuff goes on them really stiff. So we'll seat it down. He's going to use the pliers because we don't want to drop the lifters down. Not yet. They didn't fall out, see? Pretty good. There it goes. That's the bad one. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Probably put the... Uh, the put the center studs in and tighten them up a little bit slowly. Just start in the middle. The nice with the aluminum, you know, you, it doesn't 
it's going to be really hard to, to, to ruin, you know, like a mag case, you got to be really careful. I mean, they're so fragile. Aluminum's a lot stronger. It's still aluminum, but it's not steel. So you got to be a little bit careful with it. It's got the shovel pin, so it's going to be a little tighter. Yeah, this has the shuffle pins in it, so it doesn't have the O-rings. Remember, around usually you have these rubber O-rings around all these studs between the case halves, but this one doesn't have that because it's got shuffle pins. What that does is stops the case halves from rubbing together. Mm -hmm. Makes it a lot stronger. I'm just gonna put these on now, dry, and I'm like, I'm tighten it all up, snug them up, and then yeah. take them off and put sealing on anything. Normally we put sealing on here, but we're gonna tighten them down a little bit dry just to kind of get it dry fitted. You know, so that you know, so that it's all snug down tight, and then we'll take them back off and show you in a minute. We'll come back in the video. We've got the case on. I'll show you in the next second here. So you go ahead and put some sealing on all these, and then put your washers on. And put your nuts on. And we always tighten after we get done tightening these. We tighten these two first. Uh, because they're the if you have a mag case, those are usually the first two to pull. Um, I don't think we're gonna have any problem with the aluminum, but I think what happens is usually over time the these come a little bit loose, you know, all these six, and then it puts all the stress on this one here, in here, and uh, then it just causes that one to pull out. So, all right, so we got all these all torqued to 25 foot pounds, and then we're gonna put these two on here. And then check those first, and then we'll go around the rest of it, put them all together. Always stop and check your rotation. You can put a little handle on this thing. One of these with a handle on it. So you can make sure everything's rotating freely. Rods are moving nice and easy. No issues there. So yeah, we're just uh, cleaning off all the excess stuff and get everything torqued down good. We'll just, uh, finish out the rest of these case butt studs. All these here, put them all in and tighten them up. Pretty normal and boring stuff. I'll put you guys on a hyperlapse or something. All right, so uh, we went ahead and dropped one of the cylinders on here. We still got to put case saver, uh, put our case savers in, uh, and then well, we've already checked the deck height. Uh, we use uh, we're going to use this tool right here um, to get these Harbor Freight tools. If you don't have one of these, you can actually use a straight edge and a feeler gauge. I mean, that's the old school way to do it, or they have a deck height measuring tool which is still straight edge and yeah which is well, it's like a steel a straight edge and a feeler gauge you know and then find out what your deck height is on this thing we found it was like 58 thousandths pretty tight and you can't just run it like that um and we have to check both sides we'll check this side we'll pop it off we'll do the other side and it should be five thousandths difference between one side and the other because this case has this little stair step here so um, on these on these aluminum cases, you should always check both sides just to make sure, um, and then get your cylinder shims accordingly. But what we have to do next is we have to do a uh, CC test on the combustion chamber, and we don't have the spark plugs yet, so um, we may have to just continue this on the next video. And I'm just going to go ahead and end this at this point um, and this video. Be sure to watch the rest of the series on this. Um, this is going to be on a play playlist. You can hop to the playlist on the channel on building a bulletproof engine. And uh, this is going to be pretty darn bulletproof. I mean, it's not going to be like, you know, race bulletproof. I mean, I really don't think there's any such thing. If you're doing racing, that's a totally different thing. Street, this is pretty much bulletproof and very strong built. Uh, I think way better than an original engine. But, um, Anyway, just watch that series. You see the rest of it. You'll catch the rest of it it's coming up if you're just if you're just brand new to the channel. Um, if you're just uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you comment. Comment anything, whatever. Just comment about something good or bad, or tell us we messed up, or tell us something was funny or stupid or whatever. We we like to hear all those things. So anyway, uh, I'll talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. 
and uh, see you then.